Welcome, scholars, to today's lesson, lesson 2-1.4 on Timur the Lame. Uh, it's going to be the first of two lessons that cover this ruler um, who's going to help to transition us out of our discussions of the Mongol Empire and into the um, Islamic empires that are going to secede Mongol rule throughout the Middle East and India. So uh, today we're going to be introducing Timur the Lame, or um, also goes by the name of Timurlane. Now, before we get into this conversation, it's important for us to once again revisit this idea of the Mongol fragmentation, the idea that this once large empire is breaking up into smaller components. And by the 340s AD, one of those fragments, which controlled kind of northern Persia, central Asia, um, was the Western Kajitai Khanate. Um, on this map, it's going to take uh, control of the northern part of the Khanate of Persia and the western part of the Kajitai um, Khanate. So this map is not quite the perfect one for us, but you can see we're kind of talking about this area right here. Now, when the Mongols controlled an area, uh, their traditional policy, what they liked to do was take those who were loyal and who had served them well and move them up into positions of administration. So, so long as they were loyal to the Khans, um, they paid their tribute, they could maintain some sort of power and authority within their lands. And the Barlas tribe was one of those that had um, served this purpose for the Khans. And they were in a high position within the administration of this Western Kajitai Khanate. Now, Timur, our topic of today is one of these Barlas. And he had been captured by the Mongols in his youth, but had decided to serve them as a warrior and had served the Mongols faithfully from a very young age. Now, it was in his youth, while serving the Mongols, uh, that Timur is conducting a raid and he gets shot by an arrow in the leg and another one hits his hand and he loses two fingers on his right hand. Um, it's from these wounds that he is crippled for life. His, his leg is no longer useful to him, and that's how he gets the name Timur the Lame, or, um, you know, lame implies that he has an injury that impedes his movement. Um, so he gets that, that name, he has that injury, but that does not stop him from being a brilliant military leader, a great strategic planner, a wonderful administrator, and um, it does not keep him from, in 1363, becoming the head of the Barlas tribe. So he's one of the most important administrators and military leaders within this Western Mongol Khanate. Now, he is still technically a subordinate of the Mongol Khan. Um, it is a Khanate. It is a descendant of Genghis Khan who is in charge. Uh, but increasingly, it is Timur who is holding the real power. And in a move to solidify his power base, he will marry the, one of the daughters of the ruling Khan, and therefore his children will then be descendants of Genghis Khan as well. Um, but since Timur himself was not a member of Genghis Khan's family, uh, he could not be a Khan, and therefore he kind of maintains this somewhat subordinate role um, to the uh, the Khan of the Western Kajitai Khanate um, during the early part of his life. Now. He will, throughout his whole life, and his descendants will do this too, allow a puppet Khan to remain in power. Um, he's going to control this Khan completely. Uh, the Khan is basically a very well-treated prisoner of Timur. Um, but it's important for him to maintain the fact that this is a Khanate and there is a, a descendant of Genghis Khan who is in charge. Um, because that makes sure that his empire is going to have as little friction as possible with the other Mongol Khanates that are still around and still very powerful. Now, instead of being Khan, uh, Timur selects the title of uh, Amir. Um, this kind of reflects his own descent and his own beliefs. See, Timur is a Muslim um, of Turco-Mongol descent. Uh, so he's 
his family kind of has a connection to the Mongols, but additionally to the traditional Turkish tribes that live throughout that area. Now, the title Emir itself is a military title. It's the equivalent of general. So we see in the world today, if you look around, there are a number of leaders that take the title general or colonel or other military titles, um, and yet they are the head of state. They are the head of a nation. And this is what Timur does in his life. He's not going to take the title Khan um, because he's not a descendant of Genghis Khan and he doesn't want to have further uh, problems with them. Um, he's additionally not going to take the title of Caliph, uh, which would be a Muslim leadership title. Uh, because the caliphs were all members of the Quraysh. They were all members of Muhammad's tribe. And uh, since Timur himself was Turkish, not Arabic, um, not Arab, uh, he was not entitled to that uh, title either. Hence the military title that Timur takes. Um, now he will eventually become an emperor. Uh, he will eventually lead one of the great empires of the day. You can kind of see where we're heading with this map right here that will show Timur Lane's empire, um, which starts just around the city of Samarkand. Again, what was the Western Kajitai Khanate and Northern Persia. Um, but as you can see from this map, eventually it's gonna become quite a bit more than that. But that is gonna be the second part of our story. Today was merely our introduction into uh, Timur the Lane. So we will pick up his story next time.